not only how it's impacting um, folks uh, here in North Carolina, but how it's impacting us on a global level. Um, so this is a quote actually from 1890. Uh, Cecil Rhodes was one of the first sort of um, imperialists, and he spearheaded really the diamond trade. He is the uh, founder of De Beers. And the quote says, um, you know, we must find new lands from which we can easily obtain raw materials and at the same time exploit the cheap slave labor that is available from natives of the colonies. And as we, many of you seem to already know, and what I'm here to tell you today is that this philosophy has not changed, not one iota. And um, this is hundreds of years later. So the roots of globalization really came um, after World War II. We had uh, European countries that were completely decimated because the war occurred on their soil. And so um, entire infrastructures and communities were gone. And so there was clearly a need to rebuild. And um, the United States and Great Britain really didn't want that to happen without some measure of control. They wanted to be able to have some ability to steer how that happened, um, not only to be able to prevent a new dictator from arising, but also to be able to add their own sort of agenda, economic agenda, into the mix. Um, so what we had was the creation of a series of supranational institutions. Um, the first being the United Nations, which was supposed to be the diplomatic arm of these new sort of um, world order kind of organizations. And then, of course, you have the International Monetary Fund. The International Monetary Fund's job was to make sure that um, we were able to control currencies to avoid any big economic crashes. Um, but in effect, what happened was that the IMF was able to push the dollar as being the almighty dollar as we know it now. And so the IMF also um, created situations where, and we'll look at this further uh, in a few slides, um, but they were able now to control uh, the foreign exchange rates of other countries. Then you have the World Bank. Right, the World Bank's a branch of the IMF that's able to give out loans to countries at interest rates that make it so that countries are virtually unable to ever pay off those loans. The first trade agreement came out of the creation of these supranational institutions with the World Trade Organization. And the first trade agreement was a general agreement on trades and tariffs. And what's interesting about this is that there were certain countries that had domination in these supranational institutions. You have yet to see a face of color in any of these pictures. And so how does it work? The World Bank loans money to a country in crisis, an economic crisis. That country becomes unable to keep up with the interest rates that are required of them to be able to pay off those loans, and they go into default. Their economic, uh, their economic systems go into crisis, and then who comes in but the IMF to negotiate a bailout to help them bail themselves out of this economic crisis. So the IMF comes in, they negotiate this plan, and then they require countries to sign what's called a structural adjustment plan. This is Mickey Cantor. He was the U.S. Trade Representative under Clinton. And this is a quote from him that says, when countries seek help from the IMF, Europe and America should use the IMF as a battering ram to gain advantage. And that's exactly what's happened. The structural adjustment programs do a series of things very deliberately. The first is that they require countries to devalue their currency. This allows foreign speculators to be able to put their money in that country and make their money make money and then pull all of that money out of that country and re-instigate um, re another economic crisis when they pull their money out and drop it into another country to make their money make money. The second part was that they required countries to privatize their public services. So if government controlled things like water and utilities, all of a sudden you had private corporations that came in and bought out the water and the utilities. In Bolivia, there was a situation where um, the private corporations came in and they bought out the uh, water for the control of the water. They made laws that said it was now illegal to draw water from natural water sources. And then they went on to increase the rates for water by 400%. People were unable to pay for water. They became um, illegally uh, engaging in illegal activities when they tried to draw water from natural wells and from natural water sources. When they tried to uh, protest in the streets, uh, 64 people were killed in the streets. 
by their military. The second piece, or the third piece, is that they require countries to cut their social services. And finally, deregulate their environmental and labor standards. In other words, if you look at a U.S. corporation that has trouble or does not want to keep up with Environmental Protection Agency and the types of costs that it requires to be able to uh, clean water, to filter toxic fumes that are being emitted from the smokestacks, to what all they have to do is travel down to Mexico, build the same factory, and they don't have to do any of that. They can dump where they want to dump, they can emit what they want to emit, and they don't have to worry about the EPA. Labor standards, we have an entire movement that was born in this country to try to advance worker rights, get things like workers' compensation, safe work, um, safe work environments, uh, time and a half, the, the work week, all of these things that were advanced by people's movements in this country, and corporations have completely undercut that by being able to take their industries into these other countries. So essentially, the IMS says to these countries that are in economic crisis, we know how to help you. You need to make yourself more economically attractive to business, and we're going to lay out for you a plan on how to attract business to your country. The businesses will come, your people will start working, they'll have jobs, they'll spend money, and you will see that a rising tide, how is it? The rising tide lifts all boats. And that is not what has happened, not even in the least. And the video that you saw really illustrated the impacts of what is actually happening. What we have are multinational corporations that have no national accountability.